Terry Hurrigan uh, with us. Who, who was here last time Pastor Terry came? And uh, yep, the Holy Spirit did some amazing stuff and uh, just the feedback we heard in the hearts of people and that as well. So I have uh, very, I don't want to put pressure on you, but I've got really high expectations this morning that the Holy Spirit's got something uh, from his heart that he wants to share with us through you. So let's give Pastor Terry a hand as he comes up. Well, it's nice to be welcome back. Great to be here in Arise Church. Thanks for having me again. No car problems this, this time. <laughs> no drama. So I just, yeah, just believe that God has given me a word um, for you guys this morning in Arise Church. Um, and I just want to c- just commend the, the work that Pastor Al and Jackie are, are doing. I just feel that um, it's just a real new sense of freedom in this place. Um, it's, it's definitely noticeable by me. Um, it's been, I don't know when was the last time I was here. I think Gary preached. But I, I just noticed that you've hit, you've hit a new level. So with that comes new challenges and new responsibilities. So let's keep running the race. Let's keep um, seeking uh, higher ground and keep being led by his spirit because he empowers you with each step of the way. He anoints you, he empowers you, he equips you wherever he is going to lead you. And uh, it's, it's an adventurous ride. It's not easy. It's, it's full of challenges and pain. However, God is glorified in the midst of it. God is glorified through each and every one of your lives, no matter how uh, significant or insignificant that you feel that uh, you are, you have an incredible part to play in this day and age. So I just want to share a scripture this morning just to kick off um, the message in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verses 6 to 8. And it says, The Lord our God said to us at Horeb, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Break camp and advance into the hill country of the Amorites. Go to all the neighbouring peoples in the Arabah, in the mountains, in the western foothills, in the Negev and along the coast, to the land of the Canaanites and to Lebanon, as far as the great river the Euphrates. See, I have given you this land. Go in and take possession of the land. The Lord swore he would give it to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and to their descendants after them. And I just believe, um, just on the back of what Pastor Alan shared this morning, um, in sometimes we can have locked up mindsets that stop us from advancing. And I just believe that God wants us to cross over some thresholds of where we were in the past, how we viewed certain situations, even how we viewed scripture, to crossing over into a new freedom and a new authority that awaits you. We can hold certain mindsets that puts us in a holding pattern that can hinder God leading us into what God has given you. And God has given Arise Church other lands to take possession of. And these lands will impact the generations coming after you. And that's what we have got to carry the mindset that your battles and your testimony and your work, your walk with God, not only impacts your life, but you are setting up good foundation, firm foundation for the generations that follow you. I'm at the stage of life where I'm a grandmother And there's nothing that gives me more joy to see my grandchildren, and not all of them are in church, but I see the hand of God on each and every one of them. And every now and then it it just comes, God will just open up for us to be able to see the work that he is doing in my grandchildren. And now I'm praying for their children because they carry incorruptible seed that would set them up in good stead to pass on to their children. 
So we are here to stay. And we have to put our, our stake in the ground with your lives and to know that it is worth every battle, every price that you pay, everything that you might have to suffer in order to follow after Christ, it is for other generations following you to carry a blessing that you've set up for them. So we have to keep arising into new levels of possession, which means we have to discern when we need to let go of some things that used to be um, in order to break camp and advance. Mindsets can shift continuously on certain subjects. For example, if you look at the way we exercise now, back in the day, in the 80s, in the 90s, it was all about cardio and it was all about carbs. Eat all the carbs that you can and burn it off with the cardio. Now, it's all about, no, don't do that, lift weights. It's all about lifting weights, build your muscle mass. Now, back in my day, if, if I was told that, I would say, no way, because I don't want, want to be muscle bound. I don't want to be all bulky, but that was a wrong mindset. I am lifting weights now. I am not bulky, but I'm stronger, and I do eat protein <laughs> instead of the carbs. But you can see that We've got to let go of some mindsets on some things in order to become stronger and more healthier um, in other things. The way we parent, if we look at how we, we raised parenting styles, styles have radically changed from generation to generation as to how you discipline your children. Big difference to the way I was raised to how I see my grandchildren raised. So in order to step into these new concepts, we have to continuously let go of previously held beliefs. Likewise, we can hold on to certain beliefs but depending on whether you were taught in the past and of the culture of the day. But when it comes to following God and allowing him to bring us into a new season, we need to recognise when previously held beliefs are actually blocking us from advancing. In Isaiah 43, 18 to 19, it says, Do not call to mind the former things. Pay no attention to the things of old. Behold, I'm about to do something new. Even now it is coming. Do you not see it? Indeed, I will make a way in the wilderness and streams in the desert. He's about to do something new. We're about to step into something, a new era. And doesn't matter how old we are, we have got to continuously embrace new seasons and new eras. Where you once held beliefs that certain things had to be done a certain way, God wants you to cross over some thresholds so that can be a greater release of spiritual giftings and a greater level of authority in the church. After the book of jo Joshua in the Old Testament, God appointed a succession of judges to rule over Israel. Judges weren't officially appointed or elected by anyone, but rather they emerged during times of crisis to lead and deliver the Israelites from their enemies. So the Israelites went through times of freedom and times of bondage, when disobedient and when they would cry out to God for deliverance, God would use judges to lead them into battle. They were seen as chosen by God on their own merit to rescue people and restore them to right relationships with God. Now we're going to slip into Judges chapter 4. It was when a king, King Jabin, who was a Canaanite king, who harshly ruled over the Israelites for 20 years, and the Canaanites were long-term enemies of Israel. And his commander of the army was Sisera, and he was greatly feared for his 900 chariots. But during that time, a woman named Deborah, 
emerged as a judge. That's different to all the previous judges who are all male. Suddenly, a woman arise, emerges as a judge. And she was also a wife, a mother, and a recognised leader who exercised wisdom and counsel. And she was also a prophetess that heard the voice of the Lord. So while she was listening and giving counsel, the instruction of the Lord came to her in Judges 4, verses 6 to 7. So she summoned Barak, son of Abinoam, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, Surely the Lord God of Israel is commanding you, Go and march into Mount Tabor, taking with you 10,000 men of Natali and Zebulon. So Deborah was quick to pivot into a new commissioning, which indicated the season of oppression for her people by their enemy was about to change. And I believe that God is raising up prophetic voices in this hour, in this church, that respond to God's command on when and where to wage warfare. The prophetic gift discerns the seasons of battle and the seasons of counsel. And it also can outlay strategies that will bring victory. There's a shift from giving counsel to rising as a military voice to take back what the enemy has stolen. We can spend time listening to people's problems, sorting out disputes and gaining the wisdom of God from from God, but still living under oppression from the enemy. But there's another voice coming, a prophetic voice called to rally armies of prayers who will go to war and liberate captives. So when God told Deborah to go against this enemy, she didn't hesitate. She knew immediately what she had to do. And she went straight to Barak, who was the commander of the armies of Israel, and she gave the order to attack with the promise that God will deliver. There are times when women will be called upon to lead men into battle. When a woman is functioning in the authority of the prophetic gift, she can lead a man to war. It's the authority of the gift that takes precedent over whether the person is male or female. In Joel 2, verses 28 to 29, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And while it was the exception to the rule in the Old Testament that Deborah was God's choice to rule, this scripture ushers in a new era where sons and daughters, both men and women, will prophesy and God will pour out his spirit on whomever he chooses, whenever he chooses. But if we hesitate, because of doubt over who does what and who should do this or that and what is right or wrong, we can miss the bigger promise of delivery and victory. Maybe your deliverance or breakthrough lies in recognising the gift over who is bringing the gift. Barak's famous response in Judges 4.8 if you go with me, I will go. But if you do not go with me, I will not go. And God wants to challenge some traditional thinking so that you can be released from things that you've circled around because in your mind it's not the done thing. It's just not the right way. God will use out of the ordinary, the unusual, to shift some thinking that needs to come in a lion in alignment with the ways of God and to discern the seasons of God. 
So a common view of this well-known statement is that Barak is balking at Deborah's command, that he lacks faith to go without her, that he is bordering on disobedience for bringing in a condition on whether he will go or not. God wants us to cross over a threshold that it is not a weakness to ask for help. Men, it is not a weakness to ask for help. Barak put a stake in the ground and declared that he won't go without Deborah. Rather than recoiling from David's response, I believe God wants men to recognise the authority and the prophetic gifts he has placed upon women and to take that gift into battle. He wants to connect you to kingdom relationships who carry anointed giftings that will encourage you to step into new ways of thinking and new strategies. Whether it's in the workplace, at home, wherever you do life, God is building divine connections that carry a bigger impact because we recognise and validate giftings over whether they are male or female. So he wants us to cross over some thresholds where you may not think it's appropriate or it's the done thing for women or men to do certain things. But if you receive the gift, the wisdom and the prophetic message they carry, then you will begin to see things begin to shift. Are you fighting alone? The battles you may have fighting on your own and getting weary and oppressed from you will see breakthrough when you embrace the need, the, the help that you will need. And Barak represents a man who knows that he cannot win spiritual battles without the presence of God and the prophetic promise of victory. So he asks Deborah to go with him. He represents a warrior who is led by God, depends on his wisdom and carries prophetic authority to know how to fight battles and win by inviting others into his world. Barak was humble enough to admit that he needed Deborah by his side and we have to acknowledge our help from God will mean connecting to people where you previously thought that that wasn't the done thing. And Deborah's response in verse 9, So she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, there will be no glory for you in the journey you are taking, for the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh, and Barak called Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh. And he went up with 10,000 men under his command, and Deborah went with him. So when God calls us into battles, he promises to surely he will go with us and surely he will give you the victory. He promises never to leave us, never forsake us. He will never abandon you and he knows that we are powerless without him. But we must obey where he wants us to go and listen for wisdom. Women have to cross over into a new threshold. Deborah had to cross a threshold to go with Barak. She wasn't planning to go with him initially, but then she agreed to go. And God wants women to step over some thresholds where you haven't engaged before. There's a shift coming in how you do life. There's a shift in how you work together, how you do ministry together, and how you relate together. Women, you are called to go with a man into some battles, believing in them, speaking the prophetic promise over them as they engage in their battles. Sometimes the battles are too fierce to go alone. And I believe there's such a battle against men right now. There's, a, there's an oppression upon our men because they've been cornered, they've been caught and isolated because of a mindset that I must be strong, that I must carry this load. But God would say, shift that mindset and cross over into, I will carry your burdens. You are not alone. 
And if you ask me for help, accept the help that I will bring you. But it may not be help, the help that you would be perhaps at first willing to receive. There needs to be a shout that comes from us women that says no more. There needs to be a prophetic outrage at the oppression that's happening in your families and in your communities. It's okay to get loud in church. It's okay for the shout, for the outcry against God's people, against the communities where the enemy is having his way. If we look at Sisera, who was the commander-in-chief of the enemy's king, he was born and bred for war and he was a violent man. Sisera was a formidable enemy with his 900 chariots. The name, his name means battle array or a field of battle. He had 20 years of intimidating and oppressing the Israelites. And Barak had to lead his army, but he needed the prophetic to go with him. Women, your influence is powerful. Together, you will see victory if you walk together acknowledging your need of each other. Proverbs 18.21 says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Your words carry life or death. Your words can pull down or build up. You can't leave the men alone to do it alone. You are both called to join together and to do battle together. Men, you've got to disclose the struggles that you are having in your household. You have got to bring it out into the light because once it comes into the light, the power of that, that thought and those strongholds will decrease and the women can come alongside you and say, you are not alone in this. I am going to join my faith with you and proclaim that God will break through in this battle. We will see victory in this battle. Amen. Okay, another threshold. Your victory will look different to what you thought it might be. There's no glory in the journey, Deborah said to Barak. What does that mean? Sometimes we are called to go on a journey that may be thankless, a journey that we feel that we're doing the hard work, we're putting in the hard yards, we're in the background, we're overlooked. It may be a journey where you've been faithful, whether you've done all the right things, felt you've earned recognition, you've earned the reward, you've earned the promotion. But it hasn't happened. But God wants to say to you, the journey you are taking won't give you any glory or recognition. In fact, the recognition and validation for all your hard work may go to a, somebody else, even a woman. But if you stay faithful on this journey... You may not get the recognition, but you will get the victory for your battle. Your victory might be staying faithful. Your victory may be that you are doing all you do is for God's glory and not your own. Your victory may be giving the battle into the hands of the Lord. No glory, but only victory. Barak did not seek glory, he sought the victory. He wasn't in competition with Deborah or this other woman. He was okay with the glory going to another woman because he says, right, I'm in. I will go in this war. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6, it says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that in due time he will exalt you. You might be on a journey where it's a humbling journey. And if you are called by God, and everybody is, you have to walk a humbling journey. It's a journey where you think, well, where is everybody? I'm out in the back. I'm, I'm doing the stuff. 
Other people are getting recognition. Other people are getting the prize, the promotion, the pay rise. What about me? But God would say, be faithful. Take the daily steps. If you humble yourself, in due season, I will exalt you. His way. And it would probably mean that he will liberate you from feeling the need or the justification of my work deserves a reward. Life in this life <laughs> is not fair. Life is unfair. Let's just get our head around that. Life is unfair, but God is just. It's unfair, but God is just. And he sees every second millisecond of your life. He sees everything that you are struggling with. He sees your heart's desire. He sees all, you know, the warts and all. But he knows that he will exalt you in due season if you continue to be faithful to him. So in Judges 4, verse 16... Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Harosheth, Hagoeum, and Caesarea's troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael. So the pounding of the prophetic word of God and the sword of the word of God will push back and defeat the enemy because it is God's battle. It is a powerful combination to have the prophetic rallying, to have the prophetic proclamation of victory, as well as using the sword of God's word to combat your spiritual battles. It will send the enemy on foot and on the run. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4, it says, For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Sisera was weakened by the Deborah Barak attack and had him fleeing on foot. Another threshold, trust God for justice when you don't see justice. Sisera was running away. In, in Judges 5, verse 15, it says, At Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and armies by the sword, and Sisera got down from his chariot and fled on foot. You may be facing a situation where you are seeing the enemy escape. You may be watch, watching injustices get away with no retribution. You may be facing a terrible injustice and you are believing there's no justice. They're escaping. They are getting away with it. But you are on the brink of a breakthrough. Sisera was heading towards his death. Sisera found himself in the tent of a woman on her own, appearing harmless and a place of safety for him. And as per the prophecy, Sisera met Jael and the woman who was going to get the glory for the battle leading to 40 years of peace for a nation. She invited him into her tent and promptly drove a tent bag through his head. That's a whole other message that I've got in store. I can't wait to deliver it. <laughs> One day. But some of you may be carrying guilt over not being able to stop injustices. You might think that people are getting away with situations that were poorly handled and they escape punishment. Maybe some of you may be carrying anger over how things have turned out. Maybe angry with God. Life is unfair, but God is just. God is faithful to his promise. He is true to his word and he wants us to trust him when things get out of our control. Give your anger to God and the enemy will be defeated. Vengeance is mine and I will repay, says God. 
and he does. But the way he repays, we don't have to worry about. Sometimes the way he repays, we will never be witnessed, wit witness of it. But we've got to settle in our hearts that God is just and he will have his day of vengeance on your behalf. And if I could just have the, the musicians up, just as I close... I just thank you, Jesus, Lord, that you are doing a new thing, Lord God, in the lives of this church, that it is a new day, and Lord, the struggles of the past will not block or hinder the future, and I declare that they will advance, that they will arise, that they will take new territory, that they will take the hills and the mountains, Lord, that you've given them. And Father God, I just thank you, Lord, that you are releasing, Lord, chains around people's minds. Father God, I just pray for a, a liberty and a freedom against minds of men. I just see a real, like a squeezing of, a, of the temples. It's like your mind is in a vice where the enemy is just squeezing and controlling. And I declare, through the mighty name of Jesus and through his precious blood, I declare liberty and freedom in Jesus' name. I declare that the captives will be set free in the name of Jesus. And we pull down the lie that says that this is the way it is, that this is my lot in life, and there is no more. Well, I declare that to be a lie. I declare that to be a, a lie from the pit of hell. And I declare that the, the, the liar that gave you that lie has been crushed and defeated by the cross of Jesus. And Lord, we just praise your name, Lord God. We, we glorify the mighty name of Jesus. And we declare that there will be great praises of your name that will ring out from this place. Great praises of your people as to what you have done in their lives, Lord, will we'll reach communities, will reach the ears that need to hear messages of hope. Lord, we just speak to the oppression, Lord God, in people's homes, in their workplaces. And we declare that you are sending your armies out Lord, into those places to pull down, to pull down and build up according to your word. Father God, let us not be stuck within the four walls of the church, but let this be a commissioning church that will confidently go out and destroy the works of the enemy. I thank you, Lord, that you are releasing women oh, from traditional mindsets, from from the ways of the past, of how things used to be done. And I declare them to be standing alongside the men in equal uh, giftings, equal authority. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, where two are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst of them. And I declare a mighty presence of God, a mighty double anointing of the Holy Spirit upon households as they join together in Jesus' name. And we thank you that there will be shouts of victory after victory after victory in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus.